Hi there, I'm Mike. Whatever for you today is the next part of my Star Wars The Black Series checklist. I'm slowly but surely moving into my toy room and slowly filling out this, but as I pull things out of their boxes, I want to document that I have them and show you in-box figures that you may or may not be missing. That's kind of the point behind this, like, hey, these are the figures that were part of the line. So some facts about Phase 3. It started at the end of September, I believe September 30th of 2015. That was the first Force Friday. It was right before Episode 7 came out. The hype for Star Wars was pretty much at its maximum. These are all going to be the figures that came out in 2015, both in the numbered series and in the exclusives specialty stuff. So anything that came out after 2015 is gonna be in part two. So keep your peepers out for that because that'll be coming. So let's just take a look at what came out in 2015 for phase three of the Star Wars Black Series line. Starting off with figure one, we have the very first figure I bought on Force Friday at Target, I believe, because it was the only one on the shelf. And I didn't really wanna buy it either because nobody had any connection to this character at the time. And he doesn't honestly particularly look very interesting, but this is Finn from Jakku. Now, before getting into my thoughts on the figure, let's take a look at the box. So this is a new box design from phase one and phase two. It's red and black instead of blue and black or orange and black, I think were the other colors. We have a number on the side right here with the character's name on there. On the side over here, we have part of the bubble. Now this has changed. Phase three has changed packaging up a little bit and I'll document those as they happen but the bubble extends to the side over here and then we have Finn Jakku kind of up here on the top. On the back is just kind of plain. We do have a very faint outline of Finn's face and then it says Finn Jakku and then it has a little blurb about this. Now all the blurbs for these figures are very vague because they didn't want to give anything away for the movie. Again, this came out before anyone had seen episode seven. So nobody knew what to expect. He doesn't look like John Boyega. He looks more like Tracy Morgan. And there were two versions of this figure. This is the first one because I haven't bothered to really care about getting the next one. This one has more of a glossy finish on the skin. The other one has more of a matte finish and probably a little bit better paint job. So they did sort of update this figure over the years. Uh, every time they re-released it, they made it a little better. They've done that with a couple of the figures and I'll get into each of those instances. This is really the first major time where they've had the same number, the same UPC, but they've changed the figure a little bit. He's very okay. Nothing really to write home about. He comes with a gun and that's pretty much it. But I get that they didn't want to spoil too much, but they wanted to give you a character from the movie to try to get you excited. Unfortunately, we had no tie to it and it was really tough to get excited. Moving on to number two in the line, we have Rey. Now she was a little harder to find and I think that was partially because she comes packaged with BB-8, which is, you know, fun that they came with a droid in there instead of releasing him on his own. He's a great accessory. Now this one, you can see right here, I have a lightsaber. They re-released this a couple of times. So the first one, the first release that I originally got was fine, but then they released it a little bit later with a much better paint job on the face and the BB-8 had a little bit more weathering on him. And what I did was I bought that one when I saw it because I liked the paint job better and then just returned the old one because I keep the boxes. And you could do that because it's the same UPC. It was essentially just like buying a new version of the figure and then returning it right away. Systematically, you know, that's all it looked like. But when I returned it to the Walmart that I bought the updated version from, the lady looked at it and she's like, this is dusty. I wasn't doing anything wrong. It's the same figure. It's the same UPC. I'm not gonna buy it again just because it has a little bit better paint job. That's ridiculous. And then I did the same thing again when they re-released it for the third time, but this time with the lightsaber, which they should have just done from the beginning. But I get again why they didn't, because they didn't want to spoil the whole lightsaber thing. I am not going to buy another version of the same figure with the same number just because it has a lightsaber in there. I'm just not, that's ridiculous. Let me know if you did the same thing. Number three is Kylo Ren. Now again, this is another one of those figures that they updated. This is the second version because I liked it better. The first version, I'm pretty sure there were only two versions. There might've been a third, but the first version was fine. The cloak was a little oversized. This is the second version where the cloak is a little bit better proportioned. The face mask has a little bit better paint job and sculpting. And then uh, the little hard molded plastic has better detail in it. He was a hard figure to find initially because he looked cool. Everyone looked at this guy and he came with a cool lightsaber and like Kylo Ren, even though no one had any connections to any of these figures, Kylo Ren was, if you could find a Kylo Ren, that was the thing because you know, Kylo Ren. Now, number four, moving on. 
Another one that was initially a little hard to find was the First Order Stormtrooper. Now they also released this at San Diego Comic-Con as a preview figure for their exclusive. That was the 2015 exclusive. Again, I didn't really buy that one just like all the other previous Comic-Con exclusives because I just don't buy the Comic-Con exclusives. Unlike the Boba Fett and Jabba the Hutt where they came with extra stuff, there is no difference in this figure than the other one other than the packaging. The packaging for the Comic-Con version is a little bit nicer. I think it comes like a little evolution of the Stormtrooper booklet. Figure-wise, accessory-wise, it's the exact same. So I couldn't be bothered to buy that. I have this, it's fine. He comes with his gun, he comes with this tiny little gun that's easy to lose. But the articulation on this is pretty bad, especially for a trooper. A trooper should have fantastic articulation. That's like a thing a tro the stormtroopers do, the clone troopers do, but first order stormtroopers are terrible. And then number five, this is a figure that I did not buy for a very long time. It, it wasn't until sometime in the middle of 2016 that I eventually broke down and bought this because there really isn't a difference between this Chewbacca and the Phase 2 Chewbacca other than the face has a closed mouth sculpt and then the coloring is a little different, I guess, to show that he's aged. A lot of people speculate that the Phase 2 Chewbacca, which was supposed to come out in Phase 1, didn't because the execs didn't like that he was scrunched up in his box because the box wasn't big enough for him to just stand upright. This one, he, he's scrunched up like he was in the original phase one packaging. So it's kind of weird how they just ended up doing it anyway. But it was different enough for me, I guess, to just be okay with buying it, but it did take me a long time to break down and buy it. So that was the first initial five figure wave that came out on Force Friday. The next few figures are a hodgepodge. They're all still from episode seven. This is the second wave release. This came out, I believe, sometime I want to say in November, towards the end of the year. It was really hard to find some of them and really easy to find others, and we'll get to that. So starting off with number six, Captain Phasma. And again, Captain Phasma was a real cool looking figure. No one knew anything about the character other than she was played by Gwendolyn Christie of Game of Thrones fame. She's all chrome and she looks really cool. You can't deny that she looks cool. Sort of like Boba Fettish, you know? Not that she looks like Boba Fett, but Boba Fett just really looks cool. So she was real hard to find. Even after the movie came out and, you know, Captain Phasma didn't really do anything in the movie, kind of like Boba Fett, I looked everywhere for her. Definitely hard to find initially, but she got re-released over time and for a while she was peg warming a little bit. Moving on to number seven, Poe Dameron. And oh my God, this wins the award for easily the worst likeness slash worst face sculpt slash worst paint job on the face of any figure in the line. He looks so bad. On top of that, he comes with a gun, which is neat. He comes with a removable helmet, which is neat for the flight suit. It's weird that he comes in his flight suit, but you know, it's fine. I love figures in flight suits. The weird part though, is he comes with alternate hands, but they're not just his hands. It's like his whole forearm. And I get it because it, he wants to make it look like he took off his gloves, but really? Why would you do that for this figure? There are so many other figures where I can think of instances where a whole limb swaps would be rad. They did it for maybe one of the worst figures of the entire of the entire line. It's bizarre. I've actually, I've never put on his alternate hands. I've never removed them from the package. I don't care that they're there. Although I guess I'm grateful for them being there because that's the kind of thing I would like to see more but it's weird that they only did it for this one. It was a weird decision. Number eight, a uh, figure that intrigued me by the looks of it. This is the Guavian Enforcer, is that right? Yeah. I was very much looking forward to finding out how this character would play into the movie. It looked like just a generic soldier, and it is. It doesn't look very Star Wars to me. It looks like something that came out of a video game like, um, Dead Space or, you know, one of those shoot 'em up first person shooter games. I really do like the design. I just don't think it's very Star Wars, but it's fine. You know, he definitely is in the movie. He's running around on Han's ship being chased by wrath cars and whatnot. All right, and then, I, I mean, I, I have to point this out and I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack and probably even for owning it, but I honestly, I have an apology to make. I'm sorry, Constable Zuvio. I've put this figure on both of my top 10 worst figure list and I honestly, I don't think he deserves it. He got a bad rap and it's not 
his fault. When Hasbro made the lineup for these figures, they did so way before the movie was finalized. I get that. And he did not make the final cut. And again, that's not his fault, but boy, did he peg warm hard. Even when Toys R Us was closing down and everything was like 99% off, I still saw Zubio's sitting on the pegs untouched on like the last 10 days of it being open. He's really not a bad figure. He does not deserve the hate that he got. His weapon is super well sculpted, well painted. He is well sculpted and well painted. He's really not a bad figure. If he had been in the movie, I think it would have been a lot cooler. Constable Zubio doesn't deserve the reputation he has and I feel bad for him and I wish I could go back and take him off my list. I was upset just like every other fan was that at the time, you know, we got a space taken out of the lineup for something that could have been way cooler and we got something that didn't even, you know, appear in the movie, which is problematic. But again, especially with these initial waves where the figures are coming out before the movie's even finalized, like, I get it. And I'm sorry, Zubio. I really am. You didn't deserve the hate. All right, and moving to the final two figures that came out in 2015 from the numbered line. Number 10, we have the Resistance Trooper. Now there is a different version of this. I believe the stripes on the helmet are a different color. I wish they had come out with different versions of this figure with like this guy, I mean, he's, he's um, black, which is, you know, fine. He's a trooper. I wish they'd had alternate people underneath the mask, maybe a girl version, maybe a white guy, maybe an alien, I don't know. Resistance Trooper is cool, but a trooper is meant to be a troop builder. And if you buy a bunch of these, it looks just like a bunch of like a clone army because, you know, they're just the same person underneath the mask. But I, I like him. He's fine. He's a little plain looking, but that's not his fault that the people that designed the resistance troopers designed them to look really plain. And then the last figure, this is a two figure wave, by the way. So 11 is the number of figures that came out in 2015. This is the TIE fighter pilot, first order TIE fighter pilot, I should say. And again, these are all from episode seven. But these two figures came out after the movie had come out. Everything else had come out before. Uh, and it's fine, you know, he's, he's a good little figure. He's just a TIE fighter pilot. He comes with a gun, but doesn't have a holster for that gun, which kind of sucks. But you know, it's, it's good. I like having troopers and pilots and things like that. So it, it was a welcome addition to there. So that was it for the numbered line. The rest of the figures in this video are gonna be exclusives and sort of unique figures. And I'll talk about them and there were actually quite a lot of them. So I think I'm gonna try to do this chronologically, but don't uh, don't quote me on this. <laughs> Although I guess by committing it to video, it's gonna be by default a quote. I do believe the first exclusive to come out from the new phase three actually came out before phase three was even a thing. This is an Amazon exclusive. I think it came out sometime over the summer, but it's definitely not part of the phase two. It definitely, it's got the Hasbro Disney logos. It's, it's definitely, got the phase three style packaging on the side there, but it came out before phase three was a thing. At least I got it before phase three was a thing. In fact, I think I did an unboxing for it on my channel like way back in the day. But what's cool about this is it's got the information on the side right here of what's in there, but it's an evolution of the trooper. So if we open this up, we'll get to see all of the figures sort of laid out. So I like this packaging a lot. Starting over here, we have the yellow clone trooper, which is the clone trooper commander from phase one. So that's another color for our clone trooper army, which I like. We have a, a phase two clone trooper. This is the regular vanilla phase two clone trooper. And so far, this is the only regular vanilla phase two clone trooper they've released. Everything else has been colored or a specific character. Uh, next, we have another storm trooper, but he's got like blast marks and things on him, which is pretty neat. And then we have a first order Stormtrooper, and but he's the uh, officer, so he's got the pauldron and things like that. Other than that, he's pretty much the same. But this was a fun little trooper figure to get. I believe it was 80 bucks, so it was the price of four $20 figures. So it was, you know, normally priced. You might still be able to get it online, but I, I definitely like this. This is one of my favorite sets, mostly because it fills some holes. You have a regular vanilla phase two clone trooper and the next color we needed from the phase one. So I like that, and who doesn't want more Stormtroopers. Next, I believe, was this. This is the Walmart exclusive Battlefront Shock Trooper. This came out in conjunction 
with the release of Star Wars Battlefront, a game that I played the demo of but never bought. I never saw this at Walmart one time. I bought this though on eBay. This is the only other figure I bought from eBay. This is the Phasma, that's it. Everything else I've bought either on Amazon from reputable stores or you know in an actual store. It's basically just a Stormtrooper but with the Shock Trooper coloring which is great. I think he looks fantastic. It just sucks that he was so hard to find. And he was a surprise. No one expected him to come out. He just kind of showed up on shelves and everyone bought him and then they never saw him again. Next, I believe, is this one, which was the next Walgreens exclusive. This is the one that follows the prototype armor Boba Fett. This was the Emperor's Wrath Darth Vader. He's basically the same body as the Darth Vader we got from Phase 2, but the helmet, instead of being removable in pieces, it's sort of see-through and has a skull in it that looks like he's being electrocuted. His hand also comes off, which is pretty neat. He does come with his lightsaber, and just like the other Darth Vader, he does not have a place to hang that lightsaber. This is a weird figure to have in your collection because it's basically Darth Vader mid being tortured. If he's just standing in your collection, like, it's weird. <laughs> you know, he's just standing there, but he's being electrocuted. You know, it's, it's, it's a weird... It's a weird thing to have in your collection. That's that's all I'm saying. Uh, this actually might have come out a little bit before that one, but I'm not entirely sure. This is the Starkiller base Kylo Ren. This was a Kmart exclusive. Kmart came out with three of these. This one was from 2015. It's got a base down here. You know, he's mostly the same Kylo Ren, except for the lightsaber is different. The hilt is not removable. He comes with a secondary hilt that is just unignited, and then one where the, hill, the lightsaber is ignited. And then he's got some white like snow on his cloak. That's pretty much it. Other than that, he's the regular Kylo Ren figure. Just a little bit paint difference in the extra accessories and a bigger box, which is, you know, kind of nice, I guess. And even if you look in the back, it looks like trees. So the, the box is even a little different. It's not the normal Black Series box like the other two ones were. Next is a Target exclusive two pack. This is Poe Dameron. Uh, this ended up being the Poe Dameron from the beginning of the movie. It was the non-flight suit Poe Dameron. He still comes with his helmet, which makes sense because, you know, he was he was flying in this. Why even have a flight suit if you can just fly in this? Like, what's the point? He comes with this gun that he uses at the beginning of the movie. And that's pretty much it. Now, what's weird is this is technically the same jacket that Finn is wearing. But if you look at this jacket and the jacket that Finn has on, it's a different color. It shouldn't be, it's the same jacket, but it's totally a different color. And then packaged with it, we have this First Order riot controlled Stormtrooper. Now what's weird about this is there's no scene in the movie where these two face off. When this guy is on the scene, he's flying around in the sky. This should have been a Finn that came with this. Finn and a lightsaber and this would have made a lot more sense. But instead we have, you know, a two pack with two figures that, that never interacted in the movie, which is weird. But this is a cool figure to have. It's the exact same First Order Stormtrooper body as the other ones we've got. He comes with this baton thing. Now, later in the series, we got batons that opened up and that was a little cooler in my opinion. This one does not and it's not molded to fit his hand or his hands aren't molded to fit this very well he also comes with his guns if you just want to give him regular guns but this shield that he comes with is Im almost impossible to remove it's not impossible but almost impossible it's a pain in the ass so yeah it's a weird two-pack but it came out before the movie did so we didn't know any better at the time but looking back it's definitely just a weird two-pack to get and then next we have the entertainment earth exclusive four pack this had a name but i'm not entirely sure what the name for it was this had this cool sticker up here for being entertainment earth exclusive we get another sand trooper but this time he has a white pauldron i think it's the it's the sergeant which is nice. We get a Crimson Stormtrooper, which is pretty rad. It's Legends, I'm pretty sure. I don't think this is really a thing, but it's, it's rad having a red Stormtrooper. We get another TIE Fighter pilot, but he's, he's a different. His name is Lieutenant o Oshisho o Oxixo. It's O-X-I-X-O. I'm pretty sure it's from Legends, but I'm not entirely sure where it's from, but it's the exact same body as the other TIE Fighter pilot we got, but he has a little bit different markings on his helmet which is, you know, fine. And then last, we got this little R2 unit. This is actually, he's not even R2 unit. Oh, he is. Uh, he's R2Q5. Now, sadly, I didn't notice this for the longest time, but mine is actually backwards. He has two of the same foot. And you can tell because on the foot here, this hose is backwards, this hose is forwards, and he should have two hoses 
being forwards. And he's just an R2-D2 repainted black. That's it. The, the, the figure has all the same openings on his head. His chest openings are the same as the R2, but it doesn't come with any accessories like R2 did. So that's kind of a bummer. Interesting packaging, unlike the Amazon, that doesn't fold over. It's just a big, long box. Hello, hi. Is this thing on? Okay, hi. This is totally Mike, but it's totally not. Definitely recorded on a different day way later. And I definitely am not making a late addition to this video because I definitely did not forget to add something to this checklist. And I'm definitely not thanking Ed Dom for pointing out that I missed this figure in my 2015 checklist. Thank you, I am, I'm, saying, I'm saying thanks. But if I were to add something onto this list because I forgot, it might be the Toys R Us exclusive First Order Stormtrooper Officer. This was one of the first Toys R Us exclusive figures that we got, not counting that two pack with Han and Greedo. We got this figure before we got a regular First Order Snowtrooper in the line, and uh, he looks good. He's just basically the Snowtrooper we would have gotten in the line later, but he comes with this really cool little orange uh, orange shoulder pad to denote that he's an officer instead of just you know the, the normal grunt, I guess. I do like the sleek look of the First Order Troopers. I think they look neat. I really don't understand why anyone wouldn't like that. It's just, it looks cool. I think it looks really nice. And I guess that's it. Back to the rest of the video. Not that this was recorded later. T totally not. Last is an achievement in Star Wars The Black Series. It is a staple of any hardcore Star Wars The Black Series collector's collection. It is this First Order TIE Fighter Pilot. And it's actually a Special Forces one because he has the a red stripe on his helmet. So he comes with this little gun, again, just like the other First Order Stormtrooper pilot, but you know, this is Special Forces. Uh, the other accessory he comes with is this, you know, six inch scale TIE Fighter. It's no big deal. It's just a gigantic TIE Fighter. Uh, this is numbered one, zero one. So everyone wondered, were there gonna be more vehicles? And the answer is yes, but nothing, nothing this large. I think Hasbro made a mistake with this, with the pricing and the size, because no one really wanted to pay $180 for it, although my fiance did. She got this for me for Christmas in 2015, and it was a fantastic present. Now, you might be wondering why I don't have this in the box, and that is because once you put this thing together, it doesn't come apart. The wings do not come off. They, do, they just don't. They snap on, they stay on. Uh, it does not fit back in the box once the wings go on. So I just threw the box away and it's the only Black Series box I've ever thrown away because I just it's just pointless to have a gigantic box. In fact, I just threw it away when I moved here because I didn't need it. It fits two figures. It's got a you know little swirly gun things and an antenna. It's a little wobbly, just a little bit, but you know what? It's huge and it looks intimidating and I love having this on my shelf. So that's it for part one of my phase three checklist. That was everything from 2015 minus the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Stormtrooper that I did not pick up. So I pretty much got all of it from that year, which is great. Let me know down in the comments if you have the same thing or if you're missing any or what your thoughts are or if you agreed with me on any of this stuff. I love to read and respond to those. Keep an eye out for part two, which is gonna cover everything from 2016. In my opinion, the worst year for Star Wars The Black Series, and I'll get into that. There's a couple different ways down in the downstairs area that you can support my channel if you want to, but you don't have to. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, you know the normal YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in part two. Bye.